Hi, my name is Omar, you're watching Dirty Media. Really dirty. I've been listening to this guy for years. I saw him on um, Dance Energy back in the day. Yes, 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 we're coming back. And hey, 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 he's had a string of hits. It's Omar. How you doing, brother? I'm good, thank you very much. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Tell the people, how long has your career been going? Um, probably about 25 years now. Um, I released my first single in 1984. Uh, it was on my father's independent label, Conga Dance. Conga Dance. And the track was called Mr. Postman, and I hated it with a passion. Well, after two weeks of hearing it, because you know when you make your music and you're going to hear it on the radio, TV or whatever, you're going to hear it over and over and over again. Yeah. And after two weeks of it, I just said, I just did not like the tune. Well, that's what happens with tunes, though. It has to be played and people have to hear and hear. Exactly, but I didn't know, you know, I was fresh in the business. And um, so after that song there, I decided that whatever music I make has to be something that you can play over and over again. Sip a glass of cold champagne wine. The rug that we lie on feels divine. For example, when I did There's Nothing Like This, I made a cassette of, like a 90 minute cassette yeah. of just that song <laughs> over and over and over again. And I, I and I played it to people like that and they yeah. never got bored of it. So I yeah. thought, okay, that's got the, that passed the test. So yeah. any song that I make now has to pass the same test. Okay, okay. Well, but you, you don't put them on tape still though, do you? You've got CD now. Yes, yeah, so I'm on eight track actually. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, all right. Real to real. Real to real. <laughs> easy, easy. Now, yeah, you mentioned um, There's Nothing Like This. What? what what year was that again? Uh, Nothing Like This was the, f the original cut was in 1990. Yeah, yeah. And then we did another remix, uh, boosted up sound version for yeah. Talking Loud in 91. Yeah. Everybody, everybody knows that song. Everybody. You can go to some cave in Nicaragua and people will know that song. I've been to that cave and they didn't have the tune. I was very upset. <laughs> <laughs> How many albums have you had now? Huh? Uh, six to date. Well, seven including the remix, because I did my, uh, the first album I did on the independent label with my dad, and we yeah. did it on a budget kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and then we did it again for Talking Loud. Yeah. Uh, so there's two versions of that, yeah. Um, yeah. but six up, up to now, and I've yeah. got a seventh on its way. Um, there's one tune that's out on the streets now, it's called yeah. When You Touch. Okay. It's another funky house thing, a bit more up to date. Okay. Okay. Um, jazzy, funky house. Yeah. Um, but we've got some wicked tunes out there. For me, every album's great. Every album's incredible. The one I used to play loads was This Is Not A Love Song. I really love that album. Every song. It's, it's the type of album where you, like, you don't skip a track. You just listen to every track. And um, I love the one at the beginning where it sounds like, like you're drinking a drink and there's a dog barking in the background. Falling. I love, I love that song. You're like, oh, shut up. The dog in the background. Why did you keep that in? Is that just to, for jokes and, on the album? Yeah, because uh, uh, when I was recording, it was in uh, Los Angeles with a guy called David Frank, who yeah. played keyboards for The System, Chaka Khan, M2 May. You know, this guy's a big don. Yeah. But anyway, so we're hanging out at his place, writing some music, and you know, it was a hot day and stuff. So we just said, Look, leave, leave the doors open and see what we can do. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I was like, yeah, you see if we can get some atmosphere in there. And it was like a plane overhead. I think that's where I got the idea for the song as well, yeah. because it was like an angel who's lost his way a bit. He's kind of falling yeah, from yes, heaven. That's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then the, the dog next door <laughs> started barking. He was like, let me record that, record yeah. that. So then we just timed it. So it went and got to the to that to part the, in the tune. Yeah. Like, oh, shut, shut up. Has the dog called back for royalties for his pit part? Well, it's him. He's not going to get him. And you've worked with Stevie Wonder. What, what was that like? Because he must be an idol. He's an idol to me. He must well, have been absolutely. amazing. I mean, the guy's a, a proper legend to me. Yeah. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to meet him uh, in stages in my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? I met him when I was like 16, 18, 20, you know, oh, just... That's... And then like each time I've met him, then we've managed to be able to do something a bit more. Yeah. In 1992, I, I, uh, he heard my second album, Music, yeah. and he said, I'm going to write you your first number one. 
I mean, like, you know, I don't care where it get, gets, yeah. just write me something. <laughs> yes, exactly. And we had been trying since then to try and get into the studio. Because yeah. um, I went to the studio in 93 with him. Yeah. Sat down at two o'clock in the morning. And I'm talking to Stevie. And one thing about the man is that he goes to sleep when he feels tired. He doesn't know about night, night and day. Exactly. So we talk, we're having a conversation. And you just go to sleep. Yeah, well, no, we're having a conversation. Like, you know, so, yeah, I like this cord in the end. And he starts talking about the price of fish in China. I'm thinking, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? And then I realised, oh, you're going to sleep. It's half past two in the morning. Yeah, I'd yeah. waited from midnight to then to yeah. get to work. So it's not going to work now. So anyway, I've been, you know, waiting for the man to call me. I managed to get on TV shows with him. Um, and then I got a phone call in 2000 and he said, oh, yo, it's your boy, man. I'm like, my boy, who's that? Who's that? He goes, Stevie. I go, Stevie who? <laughs> Stevie Wonder. I'm like, nah, sing me something. And he sang on the phone. I was like, uh, so then we got to hang out for a couple of weeks. I was taking this man to restaurants, clubs, all kind of places. I was the ambassador for oh. the guy. So my experience with him was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then at the, at the end of that, um, we went to the studio and he wrote a song for me. And then the next day he wrote for me because yeah oh, I got another song because yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know I couldn't get any better yeah, than this. Yeah, so yeah. that man has just been you know There's nothing like this. That's you must have said. Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> so. What I'm disgusted about in this country is that you, you, you've never won a Brit Award. You don't get the big ups you should be getting. Like you're the leader of the pack when it comes to male, male vocal in the UK, and, and nothing's happening like that for you. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, it's everything in in, in time. You know, um, my stuff doesn't follow the the rules. Um, my music is kind of out there. To to me, music is you're meant to be free. It's you're meant to be able to speech. express yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that means taking on board lots of different yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. And and if that means sacrificing a, a, an award, yeah, yeah. then I, that don't really bother yeah. me. So, so you say you worked with the, the great Stevie Wonder. Is there anybody that you would still like to work with now? I'm looking out for Bill Withers and Bobby Womack because those are, I, I like to work with a, a, you know, an icon from the past, yeah. which I always, I've done that in all my music. You know, there's Stevie, there's Leon Ware, there's uh, Lamont Dozier. There's Harvey Mason, Sarita Wright. You know what I mean? It goes right down the pack. Yeah. And every time I work on that album, I like to do that. You, you've got your own soul style. Do you, do you call it neo soul? Your style? What do you call it? You just call it music. I just, people, yeah, they, but you know how people like to pigeon the whole thing. Say that's that. This is that. Exactly. This is that. And I don't. I, it, mine's a pretty big hole. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so I like how you've got your own style, but I like how you mix in with what's going on now. Hence the house stuff you're doing. You know, well, you see, it's, that, it's, you see, like an and it works, it works though, it works for you. Well, you see, that's an accident because uh, when I did, it, when I wrote it, so I was um, listening to a lot of Fela Kuti and that's Afrobeat, mm. right? And I was trying to do an Afrobeat t style, but then I went to Notting Hill Carnival yeah. and then I just came back with this soca, soca thing in my head and then it kind of got infused yeah. like that. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, well, then that, you know, the carnival crowd's going to play it. And then I hear the, 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 the funky house crowd's playing it. And every crowd is playing it. Right, you know what I mean? So it's, that's kind of an accident. But that's just simply what I do. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I'm there to experiment. I'm there to, you know, mix up things and make it interesting. Because yeah. I will not sit down and just, just do the, the, the pop thing. Yeah. Because yeah. that is just too boring for me. And I've spent yeah. too long on it. <laughs> now, with this crazy hair and everything yeah. to go, you know. Oh, your hair don't look crazy. Straight down, straight down the line. Yeah, yeah. I haven't run a comb for it for 25 years. It looks a bit crazy. Yeah. yeah. I didn't look at it before, but it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can see. You can see. You comb, comb your hair, boy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Great guy, Omar. Big up yourself. Breaking it Peace. down, down for you. Gonna make it real simple to do. Everybody needs to get down to the line. Gonna make it real simple. Don't be shy. Breaking it down, down for you. Gonna make it real simple to do. Everybody needs to get down to the line. Gonna make it real simple. Dang, damn you so Dang, damn you so Dang, damn you so Dang, damn you so I fuck this beat and never slow down